Welcome back to the Danny Harton Show. Today on this episode, I have two very special guests with me. I have Cole Joseph Hello. and Atticus with me. Hello. Two, two hyper-pop artists from uh, Franklin, Tennessee. How are you guys doing today? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Doing great. Doing great. <laughs> How about yourself? I'm doing, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, so, uh, so, Cole, you recently uh, released your first album, I did. Maybe Life, which I think is like amazing. Like every song on it is just great, and I love how you, how uh, like every song is like kind of different, mm-hmm. um, but it all like, it's all like cohesive. Mm. Like I feel like a lot of artists that try to like pull that off kind of like fall short, but with your album, I I didn't feel that way at all. I thought it was all like cohesive, yeah. yet like every song was f- was fresh. Do you want to get more into like the, um, like the album making process of that? Um, with all of them sounding a little bit uh, different, kind of the, at least the way that I look at it is just like, you know, for me, it's just about making music, whatever the, the process is. Like uh, Rick Rubin is somebody that I look up to, and he's very just like, you know, the producer mindset of putting stuff together and also having it be a little bit more raw. Um, but just kind of through that, like each song is just like, um, made by me and that's kind of the only thing that's connecting them because they do sound pretty different um but yeah i don't know in my eyes that's kind of like the the connecting factor, and i I think it'll continue that way like with new music um you know i hope it keeps sounding different um not really intentionally but just like whatever comes of it i'm like at least i know it's through my own brain so i don't worry about too much it sounding different from the other tracks but yeah I got you. I know there's kind of like a, um, there's like a general story arc in that album, sure. but there's like a, there's a few detours like on Baked or Boxing Chick. I think there's some detours, mm-hmm. but like for Boxing Chick, it kind of like, I think, yeah, I think, oh, yeah. I think lyrically, yeah. I think lyrically <laughs> it makes sense with like the rest of the album. It's just like a little detour. Do you want to get more into like the story of the album or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll be thinking about it pretty off the top of my head right now, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but yeah, I mean, most of the album is just like, like, it's clearly like a breakup is like what happened. Um, but I was engaged. I was with somebody for four and a half years. I was engaged and then, um, just had a lot of stuff that was, I still needed to process and wasn't successfully doing within a relationship. So I needed to, to step away. Um, and I mean, roughly that's kind of the, the, the idea of it, but but before that, a couple of years, I had lost a close friend, and it was kind of like the the culmination of all that, like building up, and then walking away from a relationship that I like was happy in, and then just having like the worst year of my life, like that is what made the album for for sure, and would kind of be the the story or how I put it. But um, but yeah, there definitely are are some detours. Like boxing chick has nothing to do with nothing. Um, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I get you. Which boxing chick are you looking for? Is there any like ladies out there in the UFC or anything like that that you want to? <laughs> Ronda <laughs> Rousey, come my way. Yeah. No, no, but you know, I feel like the whole uh, like the British slang of like fit mm-hmm. is something that I vibe with. So I'm like, I want to introduce that more. Like you know, oh girl, you're looking fit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. That was a, that was a great line uh, on that song. Um, I also, I really enjoyed, um, I've been drinking more, like, mm-hmm. God, <laughs> I've been drinking more. <laughs> that song, that song is, that song is so good with like the instrumentation and it's the, so and like, the lyrics. Like, uh, straight for- oh yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's so straightforward. Like, it's just like, thaw, 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 like the whole time, but yeah, yeah. it just, I don't know. It, it works for whatever reason. Yeah, but I love like the lyrics on it where you're like making the analogy of a zombie. Thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like my arm breaking off or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like you're living it up as a zombie mm-hmm. out of the grave. I think that was like fantastic. And then it, and then maybe like the um, what's it called? The title track, like at the end of the album. Oh yeah, yeah. At the end of the album, I think that really like shows a progression because like in the first song, you're talking about how like you're abusing your body basically, mm-hmm. and you're feeling you're feeling like a, a zombie. And then at the end, you say like maybe life is a drug worth hitting twice, meaning like maybe I should give life another shot instead of just like giving up on it. Yeah, totally. Which, actually, funnily enough, the um, the last song is the one that I made first. Really? Yeah, yeah. So okay. that that one I made even before I um like 
broke up or like walked away or whatever it was like after like the serious conversation that led to all of it like a couple nights afterwards just like all in one night made that song and then from there kind of after everything unfolded or whatever started to just kind of throw myself into music um and then the rest of it started happening but but yeah no i definitely think like story wise it, it felt a lot nicer if it if that was how it concluded and it's the one that like i still think resonates with me um the most they do in different ways but but yeah so when you like made that you said you made that song first um lyrically like well let me ask you this when when you were thinking about making the album originally did you want that song to be last on the track list uh that's a good question it would have gone first seventh or the last one like i either wanted it to be like the the climax yeah. what opened it or the ender so it kind of moved around as i was trying to figure and I'll, I'll say like one of the longest processes was just figuring out the album order mm -hmm. like it took way too long but you know i'm happy with how it ended like i think i'll consistently look back and be like pleased because i really wanted it to be how i would still listen to it and still be like engaged the whole way through because mm -hmm. um, i've listened to each song at least a hundred times so it's like and and also there was like you know at least 10 to 20 other songs that were cut so uh yeah yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got you um what song on that album are you like most proud of uh sad 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 i think it, i like i still think it could hit harder and i think i'll learn how to do that better in the future um but production wise like i chopped it up like <laughs> the the processes that like there's like five processes that i could go through for each song and i just like kind of stop where i'm like okay that feels good because it always could be better but it's like you know if it feels right and i know that it's polished enough then i'm like you know i'd rather keep it at that like level of rawness or whatever um but sad 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 is the one that i went back through and gave it like the razzle and the dazzle and, like did all that kind of stuff um where even if like whatever doesn't land for other people i'm like i know that like it's clean on a certain level that um other producers would be like mm, okay yeah. so that's that's where that one kind of was uh aimed at um but in other ways different ones would be i think i'm you know more proud of but off the top of my head to be that one got you atticus what's your favorite on the on the album on maybe life by Cole joseph um it's got to be i'm through is out there for sure but honestly i mean the first time i heard maybe life I was like, this is so crazy. This is dope. So yeah, I'd, I'd say maybe life, but all of them are great. I also enjoy Sad Sad Sad. I see the production value in that, thousand percent. Word. I think a sleeper track uh, on the album is Are You Really Happy? Mm -hmm. I think that one, like the guitar groove with it and like the melodies are very like, very catchy every time. Like every time I listen to the album and that song like starts playing, I'm like, oh shit, it's Are You Really Happy? <laughs> so I really like that song. Do you want to talk about that one? Hell yeah. Um, well, let me ruin it for you real quick. Cause <laughs> oh, no. um, I put plenty of work into all the songs. Um, so there's no way that I like feel like any of them like aren't uh, mine. But like uh, I came, I wrote like the whole thing in, in one setting or whatever. Um, and I was trying to figure out like tracks for it. And I knew that like at the time I hadn't been doing as many um, like tight beats. More recently I've had like finished tracks, obviously not released, um, that are over tight beats that I, I think I would release that way just because it feels right. Um, but in a similar way with Are You Really Happy, I just went over to Splice and I looked up like a couple different things. Mm -hmm. And it was just like uh, two or three parts that kind of like had a certain flow to them. Mm -hmm. And that like, you know, there's like a lot of like rising and going down and um, in later versions of it, I did do a lot of, um, you know, like in, in the old days it used to be like you had a mixing board and you would like actually mix it. And so my quick fix to that is just throwing on faders and like duplicating tracks. So I did a lot of that to like give it more like flow and everything. Um, but it's basically just like a couple of splice samples. Yeah. And then like the lyrics like. Okay. Well, that's like another aspect of like being a good producer is like 
Sure. Yeah, it's like yeah. knowing when to add like a sample or something else and knowing when to like sort of marry all the samples together. Yeah. And that one, uh, have you seen the movie Begin Again? No. Oh, okay. There's a, there's a scene in it where there's a producer who's like uh, drunk at a bar and it's before he like meets the, the lady that's like the lead that they'll like, you know, get into a work career together or whatever. Um, but he, she's just up there playing the guitar and it's like a slow song. And at first in the movie, you see it through her perspective and it's just like her playing it empty at a bar. Then later in the movie, you see it from his perspective and it's like in his head, you see him like adding in the drums and adding in the violin and it has like this whole like swell to it. So that whole, that like picture in my head of um, that type of producing, uh, I definitely like appreciate or like try to emulate or, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, I get you. Yeah, I get you. Um, word, man. So yeah, maybe life. Y'all, sh- y'all should check that album. I should check it out. Do you? Do you guys want to get more into like your background, like both of your backgrounds, like your musical? Sure. Yeah. Here, I'll pass it off to Atticus for a second. Yeah. Um, musical background. I'm guessing in what way? Mm. Like sort of like, uh, like what's your like relationship with music? Um, like growing up, like how did you get into it? And more importantly, like. When was the moment that both of you guys like realized, okay, I want to like do this, like like for a career? Gotcha, gotcha. Um, I was I was always around music growing up, um, but at ten years old, I started taking piano lessons. No choice of my own. Um, parents forced me into it as part of the homeschool curriculum, and I hated it at first. I I really didn't enjoy it. Um, I felt like I had to do it, and it felt like homework. But in a matter of, you know, maybe uh, two or three years, I started having fun with it. You know, I moved past the point where I felt like a beginner, Mm -hmm. and I could actually start doing stuff and learning stuff on my own outside of lessons. So I just went into uh, eventually purchasing, uh, working on GarageBand a bit, but also getting into Logic. And uh, that's what I've been on ever since. But I think probably 17, 16, 17, uh, I was like, what am I actually going to do? You know, I started evaluating my, you know, adult life. And I I couldn't see myself doing anything other than music. So I started getting serious. How do you think uh, Trevecca and college played into that? Uh... I mean, that was definitely like the big move in that direction uh, after high school because I got a um, got a music scholarship to Trevecca and intended to study piano performance solely. And so, you know, you got the normal program with all the uh, theory stuff and... uh, yeah, oral theory, music theory, and that was helpful. Um, but after I think a year of doing that and doing like the juries, spending eight hours by myself in a piano room and not vibing with it because I'm not an introvert, <laughs> I want to be around people. It just got super lonely and depressing. So I was like, not it. So I switched over to music business all the time, just kind of making beats and logic in the dorm, you know, mm-hmm. getting uh, getting classmates to rap over them and all that. But went into music business and did that for a bit, but that wasn't my thing either. So inevitably, well, no, no, I enjoyed it, but the the professor there in charge was. Uh, not as motivating. Um, I wanted to go hard and I wanted to do all that I could. And uh, kind of, he kind of just diminished the uh, the effort I was putting in because me and my roommate would do a project. My roommate was studying music business as well. Um, but we would do a project and he would give us feedback and, and never, I mean, he said we did too much. And I was like, there's no way. Yeah, that's not a- that's not a thing because we're like this is supposed to be what we're doing, what we're thinking about right now. This yeah. is the next step. We're going right. hard. Yeah. So I mean, I figured after all of that and knowing my own ambition and uh work ethic, I would just make things happen on my own. So 
since then, I mean, I dropped down and started making beats in the basement in West Nashville for a bit, and that's when I started releasing music. So that's what I've been on ever since. Weird. Yeah, I want to circle back to like uh, like teeth and stuff like that. Yeah. But but uh, but Cole, what was like your uh, musical upbringing? Uh, yeah. Um, my family's always been, uh, well, not really my family, but my dad um, is a producer, so it's been kind of around. But I also knew other producer kids that were like in it, and I would even go over to other producer kids' friends like houses that I would be in it over there. But on my end, I really wasn't. It's more so that ju that's just who my dad was. Um, so I'd say like through that, I picked up a lot of my music um, inspiration or like different things that I value. Um, and there's different things that he values in music that I really appreciate, but then just, you know, obviously want to do completely differently. Um, uh, but then also just lots of playing instruments. I mean, like I took piano lessons when I was like five or something like that, but like, you know, I don't remember any of that. Um, took guitar lessons at some point, like when I was 14 to maybe like 15, 16. Um, and I was just horrible about practicing. And I mean, basically across the board, just uh, practicing was never a solid part of it. So it uh, since then has only been self-motivated. And uh, for me, I think my true roots lie in the computer and just, um, you know, working on tracks and, and not knowing what the fuck I'm doing, but just being able to like press a note and be like, that sounds like, ah, you know what I mean? And then yeah. I'm like, da, 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 uh, and come up with melodies and stuff like that. And uh, more so than anything, I just hear um, parts constantly. And I'll always just walk around. Um, in my head, I'm a drummer first, and I can't not be moving my feet or tapping my head. When I'm walking, I'm always making a beat. Da -da 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 -da, you know, just whatever, just all the time. So yeah, I, I can't escape it to some degree. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd say that's kind of loosely the origins. It's uh, interesting that you said that, like, you consider yourself a drummer first, um, because um, I know that a lot of good producers, um, or and like even like producers or even artists, like that was like their first instrument mm. was like drums. Um, like the first, the first guy I interviewed for the series Into Misery, he was also a drummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like now making like a emo, hip hop, and music like that, and uh, and also like Travis Scott, who just makes some crazy. Is he a drummer? Yeah, that was his first. That was I his first instrument. He just, yeah. I mean, I mean that tracks. You know, you know. That tracks. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like, yeah, I just find that interesting that a lot of producers are like, yeah, drums were like my first thing, and now I'm like one of the greatest artists of all time. I do think that it has to do with, um, like specifically the end of it, where it applies to singing as well, but with rapping and cadence, um, just being able to find pockets is like, you know, the more swing, the more that you know what is happening and nobody else does, that you can just deliver, you, you know, can never like fall out of the pocket, um, which just isn't a bad thing to have so in, in my head it tracks um for sure a little bit that those two things lie hand in hand but yeah yeah i got you uh so atticus i want to talk a little bit about your first uh project yeah yeah teeth uh-huh I, I like that ep a lot too Sweet and it also you. it also definitely has like a story yeah um, totally. like maybe life does i think the teeth story is a little more uh easy to follow uh, gotcha. i would think yeah. but um but yeah, do you, yeah. Just tell me a little bit about that that EP, like what the process for that was. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, the uh, I mean the whole concept of the album, um, really. It was mainly mostly made uh, between a basement in West Nashville that I got to stay in for free, um, and just set up a little studio there, and then in a house in Inioc that I rented out with my ex-girlfriend and a uh, friend from high school but um yeah i mean it, it's a it's a very emotional album um it is a breakup album of sorts but also more of a it's, it's like a breakup album that's taking place in a like nes game and yeah I, yeah totally and i really totally. and i really really like it yeah it's uh it's a story of regret and just uh loss and I mean, it, it was really the outlet of, it was a real time, 
timeline of me processing all of that. So I just couldn't process it any other way. I'd broken up with somebody in a current relationship in that Indianapolis house. And, um, but I was missing the previous person I was with before. Okay. And so there was a lot of just attention and almost like secrecy in a way. Cause I'm like, I have to, you know, tell somebody this, but I don't know who to tell. I don't know how to tell him. And I don't want the person I'm with right now to know, which is super fucked up. I was an asshole at the time, especially in my relationships. At that time, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it was, it was its own learning experience. But no, Teeth, uh, the the name of the project is based off of, obviously, human teeth, but the loss thereof. Um, I used to have a lot of dreams about me losing my teeth uh, as a kid. I still do occasionally, but uh, I'm researched uh it a bit and turns out uh well some scientists have speculated that it's supposed to symbolize lack of ambition and uh that really resonated with me as far as i i'd like to think i i work hard and i just get things done and so that album explored my personal I mean, my personal experience with yeah. ambition and also the counterpart being love. It's like love and work. Yeah. Which one am I going to choose? Can I choose both? Yeah, I get you. Uh, is it in chronological order then? Like the way that the tracks are on it, were they made in that order as well? Somewhat, yes. For the most part, yes. Okay. Did You Miss Me? Um, that was made in the West Nashville basement. That was the first song I ever released. I released it as a single beforehand. Mm -hmm. And that was the only thing released before the EP. But yeah, it was it was pretty chronological. Um, I would kind of switch things around just to see how stuff flowed. But at the end of the day, it flowed better the way I'd actually recorded it and produced it. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask you, like, what... Uh, artists were you listening to at the time that you were making it? Um, th yes, there. There's one artist in particular that Cole introduced me to um, the year before, and honestly, they're probably the largest influence uh, as of now. Uh, a band called Hundred Gex. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> the yeah. 100 yeah, guys, so kind of hyper pop pioneers, but just this out of left field crazy project. It was Thousand Gex, the album that he showed me. Um, yeah, yeah. Always been a Kanye fan, so that's always mm -hmm. been in my uh, in my rotation. And little John Bellion, um, got a lot of respect for that dude as a producer artist. Um, and then just lots of hyperpop, honestly. <laughs> I kind of got lost in the in the glitch hyperpop yeah. rabbit hole. I got you. Yeah. <clears throat> um, did jo Were you listening to Joji at all? Because on what happened, you kind of do like this very high uh, singing, and it kind of sounds like a like um a Joji song. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Ballads one. That's my favorite Joji album of yeah. all time. Uh, but yeah, I would. That was definitely in rotation. The first track is my favorite, though, off that album, Attention. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. good. With the little yeah. piano band. Yes, and then it, like, gets distorted. And, like, yeah. Everything. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that album, when it came out, I was, like, 15, I think. Yeah, I was 15. And I was watching, like, since I was, like, 12, there was, like, a Boy Scout trip, and uh, we were, like, in a cabin uh, um in Tennessee, and like someone introduced me to Filthy Frank, the Filthy Frank. Videos. Yes, yes. And so when I was twelve, that was twenty fifteen, I believe. So, um, so yeah, so like I would watch Filthy Frank, like me and my friends. I would like show friends because you know you're like an edgy like middle school or whatever. That's what you watch. And so I was there when he was like making that transition where he's like, "Hey, I don't want to do this shit anymore. It's not sustainable, like health wise." Right. Uh -huh. And then and then he's like, oh, by the way, I've been making music this whole time. Pink Eye? Yeah, Pink Eye was just a, that's just a little side project. Here, uh -huh. Here's my real shit. 
Yeah, so yeah. good. So good. Yeah, I mean, Pink Season, I think, is like a comedy master masterpiece. Ahead of its time. <laughs> yeah, I only listened to Pink Season, like, all the way through, like, once. Because, like, when it came out. Because I'm 14 and I have, like, all the time in the world. But anyway, so, yeah, I wanted to, like, talk about Joji, where it's, like, you know, I was there. And I'm sure you guys were, like, paying attention to, to like, when he was, like, making that transition. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, it's, it's to music. The, <laughs> it's one of the coolest transitions I think in music, and uh, it's my favorite thing ever. If people love Joji and be like, "Hey, did you know about Filthy Frank?" and show them just like all the like the you know him putting little baby dead rats and burritos and stuff, and you're like, "You like his music? Cake. What do you think now?" And they're like, uh, "I'm just gonna dissociate that section of it." Yeah. And like, you're, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. Yeah. I think that's something that Joji. Or Filthy Frank specifically, but no, the the person behind it and Hundred Gags have in common is taking things all the way, yeah, or like or the past the, past the line, yeah. you know, or the conceived line, because yeah. you know culture is all based off of these boundaries or parameters. And what's so cool about Hundred Gags is they're they're doing crazy and clusterfucks of genres, right? Yeah. You know, and then on the other hand. Joji is just sending it. He sent it all the way in with Filthy Frank, right. and then all the way the other direction yeah. with uh, with the music thing. And yeah. I have a massive respect for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Going for, outside the lines, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, there's even like in a few uh, Pink Guy songs, you can really like hear like uh, like Joji's actual voice when he's actually singing and putting totally. effort in. Mm-hmm. Totally. To like a few select songs. But I kind of want to talk about ballad, Ballads 1 because like when In Tons, I think it's called, like that this EP. first one? Yeah, that yeah. EP came out. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I cannot wait for like his album. And then his album drops and the 15-year-old me was like, this is it. <laughs> this is I, it? I was like, yeah, I was not I was not a fan originally. Really? Like I liked, I liked, um, I like, I liked how, like exactly half of the track list and then the other half i'm like i don't like this shit at all really and like, yeah and like me me and my best friend because he was also like a filthy frank joji fan we would literally like like get on like discord calls together and like try to rearrange the track list to try no to make it way. sound better That's hilarious. yeah like like i'm serious like we would put uh we would keep um I'll see you in 40 at the end, but we would put like ballads or no, that's not what it's fucking called. We put slow dancing in the dark right before it, which I still to this day, mm. I think that's a better fit. I think like two, I think the second song is way too early, but I've kind of come What's to the a, second one again. Well, on the actual album, yeah. it's attentions the first and yeah. then slow dancing in the dark is the second. Oh, the, yeah. oh okay. Gotcha. Yeah, and I still think that that's way too strong of a song to put on as your second, mm. in my opinion. So I, I was going to say, <laughs> I think Cole, Cole and I have been talking recently about um, the way we view albums yeah. and track order and how, you know, if there's a pattern that's followed and what works is there something that kind of works across the board as far as putting the strongest song where exactly yeah but i, I think well, yeah, you should get into that okay i'll, I'll i want to run this past you and see if any of this lines up since you've also spent a decent amount of time like thinking about track order yeah for sure so obviously i spent you know however much time way too much time thinking about the track order for my track so a, a lot of that had to do with analyzing other albums that i really appreciate um, to Pimp a Butterfly, 2014 Forest Hill Drive. Um, and in a weird way, the Thriller album, like the Thriller album yeah. is only nine tracks long, but it has like five songs back to back that are like Billie Jean, Thriller, Pretty yeah, Young Thing. Like some of the biggest it's songs. It's like ever. Beat It. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. like I don't even under, like I can't fathom it. I still, it's so. Yeah. <clears throat> but. Um, yeah, it seems like the first song is always a vibe setter, or it's the one that hits hard. And for me, being somebody who's not well known yet, like the first song hitting hard is something that I needed. So there were other yeah. tracks I wanted to put in in front, um, but it just made more sense to have it be something that's gonna like grab everybody's attention. Okay. Um, second one definitely seems like it needs to be the banger. Yeah. Uh, third one seems like it needs to be like like three, four, five. Like they all need to like still like keep a certain pace. Um, 
but three seems like it needs to be like kind of mad but still like in the pocket four is a little bit more emotional and then five i'm realizing is also still usually a banger um the analogy I made is uh, six is sex, which I think it does usually kind of run that way, but it can also just be more aggressive or transition into seven, which I do think is the climax of most albums. Um, okay. But I, d I think a lot of them will do like a switch play where it's like, you know, maybe I want eight to be where it is or eight makes more sense. So then I'm going to have like like an interlude or something. Yeah. Um, and on to Pimp a Butterfly is a, a good example where seven, eight is um, good kid, Mad City. Good kid cool track but mad city is where it's at um and eight is usually hate in my head and then nine ten i don't i don't really know ten usually hits and then eleven leads into twelve but i think those are interchangeable as well whether it's like a final climax or it's the thing that sends you off with a nice vibe and i think both yeah. of those work um but i'd be curious what your thoughts on that what would you say before what would you say is the ideal um track length not time ways because that can differ but like 12 tracks 10 15 like um i mean obviously i went with 12 and um i think that there's something to about 11 to 13 uh has a certain flow to it but you know like i don't know i think it can go up to i i don't think that there's a right order for that because there's mm -hmm. so many albums in every single different length you know one song can feel like it's three songs so yeah i don't think that there's any yeah any real uh, logistics to that but. there's also like um there's also like albums with interludes or something like skits and things like that like i think about uh pink floyd's the wall and there that is like i think around 20 tracks on that album and some really? of really i think so wall? i'm pretty sure it's like definitely definitely up there and some of them are like uh more like some of them are more like traditional songs where they're three to five minutes long Others are just in sh like quick, short, instrumental interludes sure. that sort of paint the picture. But you could not take any track from that album like off. And like if you took any track off, it would feel completely different. So I think totally. it just I think it just depends because like The Wall is a very famous like concept album. Mm -hmm. And so every piece to that is like essential. Um, same thing with like Dark Side of the Moon, but I think that's that has like ten or eleven tracks, so that's a bit more of traditional album length at least. Yeah. Um, but when we were talking about like uh, I guess the pace of an album, you you guys you've heard AM by Arctic Monkeys, right? Um, I I love Arctic Monkeys. I like I've listened to so much of them recently. Um, it's one that I've been introduced to in the past, but I I couldn't say that album specifically that i like know for sure but um they are great they are great and as like musical inspiration they're like one of the top that i think within the next five years i'll still be like seriously looking into them so but am yeah their their am album i feel like i feel like that's i feel like uh the pace of the album is perfect because mm. it's it kind of starts out with like a sexy moody song that sort of fits mm. the whole vibe of the album yeah, and then like tracks two, three, and four are like all banners. Yeah. Like like two is is like, you know, just like very hooky, very poppy, but also like very aggressive. You know, like it's like the perfect. Mm. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like the perfect rock song, and then three, four, five kind of go off with that, and then six is like when they bust out the piano, and they're slowing it down a little bit, and then they go into more like like a. Uh, hooky like uh funky directions mm. uh and then they sort of like bring it back with like two really strong like pop rock songs and then they end it off with like another slow like slow twainy guitar track like lots of tremolo like uh. he's he's singing uh like in that like lounge singer way like very slow very like calculated and that kind of like sends the people off and that's like the the good closer mm -hmm. so how yeah. many tracks is it? It's 12. Oh, okay. So it's so, also yeah. like, you know, the traditional thing. And it's around 40 minutes. So 12 tracks, 40 minutes. It's like... like three and some yeah. change. Yeah. Three minutes a song. Yeah. I can't say I'm familiar with it. Like, I, I know of Arctic Monkeys, but yeah. I don't know. I haven't listened to that particular album or any of their albums in. Yeah. Uh, all the way through. You should definitely listen to AM, even if you don't like the music. Just listen to it and kind of get, like a feel for like the the rhythm and the cadence of the album because totally. 
I always look at when when people are or when I'm thinking about like the perfect track list in terms of like how everything feels. That's like my go-to. Is right. that is that album? So I would I would definitely recommend everyone listen to that, even if you don't like the music. If you're just sort of interested in this topic, definitely definitely like give give that album forty minutes of your time, for sure. Oh yeah. So I want to circle back to like your own like uh, your guys' music. I know that like you guys have two songs I think out like that you guys made together. Yes. Do you want to like talk about like those? Sure. Um, yeah, we've got two out, Peace of Mind and Overdose. Uh, I guess I'll talk about Peace of Mind a little bit, pass it off to you. Sure. Um, I really actually don't remember how we went about. Usually our process, and this is more of Cole's process too, is um, making comps out of freestyles. Like we'll, we'll make the track, uh, we'll make the foundation, and then we'll go into the booth and just starting to spitballing ideas, just kind of riffing aimlessly with auto tune or, you know, freestyling. Um, but we love, we've been a big fan of freestyling for a long time. So when we don't know what to do in the studio, we freestyle it out and pretty much watch all the videos. So that, um, that particular song though was largely just us going back and forth, you know, pulling up notes. At least on my end, I pulled up some notes, found some lyric ideas, and just went off of that. But um, the track itself is actually a sped up version of the original. Um, because we laid it all down, and obviously we're trying to go for that more hyper poppy uh, glitch sound, uh, which I think we accomplished very well. But for some reason, when we, uh, when we freestyle or we sing, uh, we think in in similar but opposite ways of where it can go. So we find more often than not that if you just, you know, side uh, pan left, pan right, our vocals after freestyling, you can we get a, a really good uh, dynamic going back and forth, just naturally, um, where our minds tend to go melody-wise. But if you wanna say your thoughts, <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know what I would add to that, honestly. But um, yeah, no, I agree that definitely if we're both doing something on a track, it definitely like, I mean, just in weird ways, like it'll be like, nah, 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 like it just kind of like goes back and forth. Yeah. Um, so it tends to be easy to uh, comp from it, but also just across the board with uh, any music that I guess that I'm making. Um, like just getting all of the the takes down and then figuring out the comp and sometimes arranging the music off of the uh, the vocals and working it kind of backwards a little bit uh, tends to be an effective method that's worked. Mm. You know, Overdose like, was more. Uh, <laughs> Overdose, <laughs> yeah. Overdose uh, was more written. Uh, that was more planned out. Um, same yeah. aspect though, you know, lay down the instrumental. Usually it's just us going back and forth, laying down a part, switching up a sound, and then, you know, switching yeah. switching out. Uh, but yeah, no, we wrote all of that, you know, had it in writing before we recorded it, pretty much. But I will say for that one, like a lot of times we'll come into it and we'll have like plenty of notes written beforehand that we're just like pulling from, or we'll like uh you know whatever whatever but um with that one we did write i'm pretty sure the whole song when we did it which isn't usually like that's not very typical right. of us to like actually sit down and write a song in one night in one night or like that's going along with the tracker like it seems like that'd be the natural process is like you make a song and then you write to it um but that's i feel like one of the few times that it actually did happen mm. so yeah i got you guys are y'all ever gonna like make a joint project together Definitely. Okay. Oh, there will there will be multiple joint projects. I think yeah. I think we've accepted that at this point. <laughs> no, 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 not like that. But like accepting fate, as in yeah, it's destiny. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's destiny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I really Once. like both of your uh, your guys' music, and like, you know. And I like the songs that you guys did together, so I'm just like I'm just looking forward to like both of your like futures. You know? Thank you, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, together I, and separately. I definitely think overdose is at least right now. Well, we've got songs that we've made plenty, 
uh, which we think are just like, you know, we're, we're progressing, we're topping the one we made before. But Overdose was definitely a realization of, oh, like this is what we're capable of and kind of just a launch pad, so to yeah. speak. Yeah, I would definitely say that like um, every once in a while we'll come across a song um, that we've made or like for each of us that we've made individually that will be like our own inspiration to be like, uh, like we are reaching for something or there is something to attain at the end of it or like, I don't know, that it's that it's possible or that there's like actual inspiration. But anyways, that there's tracks that continue to inspire and um, overdose for like a solid year, like probably all of 2021 was like the track that was keeping us moving i'd say um are you guys ever gonna like uh sort of like branch out into other genres or or do you guys feel like comfortable in hyperpop i think the uh i really like hyperpop don't get me wrong um especially 100 gags take on it um but i think it's inevitable that we branch out because as uh as musicians and also producers uh we gotta stay faithful to the muse, muse, you know, itself. So we'll we'll di- diversify, and I know we're hoping to um, produce together other people's projects as well. Okay. I think that's I definitely closer on our horizon. Yeah. Do you know the uh, Neptunes? Uh, yeah, like Pharrell. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, and what's it? Uh, Chad? I'm Hugo. sure Hugo. Yeah. Good memory. Um, yeah, they are definitely people that we. Um, looked up to or at least i do in terms of like a i did like dynamic duo that you know is putting together other projects like very randomly like the first solo uh justin timberlake project was put together by them and there's like a ton of like i i don't know that i've even really listened to the project all the way through like there's probably random tracks that i know but um yeah there's behind the scenes footage of it and it's very like I don't know, just intriguing to like see the the processor like they're like they're just trying to make music and they're just like kind of experimenting like but in a more natural way like you you see people try to emulate what um you know other bands do where they grab random stuff and they're just recording like uh I, I don't know if it was Queen or somebody else that like did a lot of that but I feel like a lot of people tried to emulate that and Neptune's feels like a natural progression where for them it was moving into electronic and I think we're just moving further into electronic, but like just finding natural ways to experiment, whether it's, you know, in the programming or just in the room, like, you know, can you, I don't know, sing it like Kermit or something and then let's distort it like crazy so that you can't tell that you originally did it like Kermit and like pitch it up or something like that. And I mean, that's just off the top of my head, but, but it sounds interesting. Like you don't know what it would sound like, uh, but just trying like that kind of stuff out is, uh, interesting. I will say, uh, one of, I guess my own personal challenges right now of us working in the studio together and spending so much time trying to make good stuff is, uh, is transparency and vulnerability. And I think, the idea of just how far we will take things really, I mean, it plays into the mind for sure. And just, you know, letting go of any, you know, presuppositions or ego stuff that might get in the way, you know, doing weird voices, you know, fuck it. Why not? Yeah. Sing, sing an entire song in the Kermit uh, voice or like recently I was recording, uh, you were on the, uh, on the console and uh and you switched over after i got my takes you switched over to uh megan trainer uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't i mean i, I got mean, nothing to say about it but yeah basically funny. he just played over and because if there's you know there's uh there's uh man i don't even know what it's like the prompt if you had a gun to your head you had to sing a song all the way through word for word for me it would be uh one of megan trainer's songs <laughs> Or at one point it was. It was like lips are moving or something that I just heard all the time. So, and then, you know, he played the instrumental and I just made some really weird noises. Just fucked around on it because at the end of the day, we have this space and there should be no limitations. Why should we color inside the lines when all of these lines are just how we perceive things? These aren't yeah, real lines. We can do saying. anything. And that's the beauty of art. You never know. Yeah, I got you. 
Uh, I want to talk like about your artwork, uh, both of your artwork, like yeah. real quick, because you guys have some uh, very like detailed like artwork for singles and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, do, do you guys like commission anyone, or do you make it yourself, or like what do you guys do? I think uh, at least on my end, uh, I've made everything myself. Apart from like, uh, I have a song coming out later this month that we I did outsource with uh, with Into Misery actually. Oh really? Um, nice. We got a couple songs coming out, but then I have a song or a remix on uh, on SoundCloud that I had a buddy do the artwork for. But usually it's. I mean, on my end, it's me, and I know on Cole's end, it's uh, it's definitely all self done. Yeah. Yeah. How did, how did you make the Maybe Life album cover? Um. Uh, okay. So I have a a process that I've done with just like a a bunch of random photos where I'll um, I I just like to um take a photo and and put it onto like the square mode, and then just go through all of the settings and just like adjust them all the way to the end, like just kind of move around the scroller until something feels right. Um, and to me, it's a lot like playing music, just like getting all like the, the feel of it right. And then you go over to like the filter section and then there's like vivid, cool, vivid, warm, vivid, dramatic, whatever, um, that can kind of give it a last little bit. And then you, then I'll, I'll screenshot that again, put it on square mode and then just do it like 10 times. Um, with the Maybe Life one, all of the, the lines in it though, uh, you know how there's like the the drawing feature, if you were gonna edit a photo, like you yeah. could draw on it. Yeah. Those lines are literally just me going like this, oh, okay. yeah, um, with you. just putting slight intention behind uh, like certain lines where I'm like, I know nobody will ever like get why whatever whatever, but at least if on my end there is some intention behind it, somebody else can come up with their own meaning behind it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. But yeah, and with the uh, peace of mind one, that was a more fun process where uh, me and Atticus just got together, took a bunch of photos of each other, and then I just threw it into either Photoshop or, um, for me, weirdly, it's easier to edit a photo in uh, Premiere Pro. Um, so I'll just drop all of it in there, um, line it up, and then like throw an overlay over the top of it until you know everything feels right, and then, yeah. Gotcha. All right, I want to ask uh, both of you guys, like for the people watching, uh, what song of theirs do you guys want them to like listen to first? Like, what's a good introduction to to your music? Ooh, that's a that's a good question. Our our uh, thoughts might be differently here as far as joint collaborations. Uh, so as my own music goes, well, um, I'm thinking more like the like here you listen to this Atticus song first, and then you listen to this Cole uh, Joseph song okay. first. Okay, okay, yeah. gotcha. Um, man, first Attica song you should listen to, probably, I'd probably start off with Teeth. Like, Did You Miss Me, the first single, like, follow that chronologically, because okay. I, I feel like that does follow a, a tangible and easy to follow train of thought. Yeah, I forgot to ask you this earlier when we were talking about it, but, yeah. um, on Spotify, I saw that there was like no singles from Teeth. It was just like the Teeth EP, unless like you took down the single version. But did you did you put singles like leading up to that, or did you just put Teeth like by itself? I I dropped there? Teeth as a whole. Um, yeah. The only the only single I had beforehand um, was the uh, the first track. Did you miss me? Um, and I I think it's still up on Apple Music. It might not be on Spotify as a single, okay. but yeah, the whole idea was, you know, just this block, you know, digest yeah. everything. You don't get any, you know, foreplay in that way. Yeah, you yeah. got to get into it. Gotcha. And I mean, it's it's like 20 minutes or something like that. So yeah, it's not yeah. a huge like time commitment. It's not, yeah. I know how everybody's time commitment is now we're watching 15 second videos. And if it gets past that, <laughs> it's like, I, you probably won't finish the video. So. Yeah. You gotta reel them in sooner rather than later. But yeah, twenty minutes. Check it out. Teeth. <laughs> Bionicus. Available everywhere. Alright, but Cole, what song do you think people should like listen to first of your music? I mean I've been drinking more isn't a bad <laughs> way to start into it. Like I mean that's yeah. not, not accurate. Um Yeah. I yeah. mean if that yeah. 
Yeah, that song kind of like sums, I mean, it sums up the project, but it's also like one of your most dynamic songs, I think, at least in my opinion. So I don't think that's a bad pick at all. There's a uh, there's a few different versions of it well that um, as well that change the uh, end of it. So the end of it to me has always been a little vague, but I feel like those first two all the way through the chorus until it kind of changes into like the, you can tell it's the back half of the song, like that really does feel like a very solid thing. And and there was almost a, I almost released it with just it cutting there. Um, but then, I don't know, I just like the, since it's a four on the floor, just like the more dance song dynamic of like having it continue on where like, you know, it's on a very small scale now, but like if it was in a club, could it continue going? Could people continue just moving to it until it fades out? Um, not really anything to do with anything. But yeah, I'd say I've been drinking more. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Are y'all going to like start making like music videos or like more visual media? Speaking of I've been drinking more, <laughs> um, yeah, we've talked about getting a um, kind of a team, to, uh, team of people together and trying to... Um, figure out a video for it. I feel like in the past I had a lot of music video ideas, um, but more just like conceptually in my head, the way that you just have like a random thought on an afternoon. So since then I haven't had like a uh, specific idea for really any of them, but um, yeah, I don't know. Just opening that world up for um, other creative people to also lend their skills and like, you know, I don't know, merge it together or whatever. But the yeah. Definitely thinking about music videos and just like also trying to think about content and, and promotion. And, uh, you know, people do need kind of a story or a, a visual to the whole thing. Um, I'm realizing is very important. So definitely probably in the works as of the next month or so. You got you, Atticus? Um, yeah, no, I would definitely be. Uh, I've, I've definitely had music video ideas. I I'd, I'd couldn't say that there's a song... At least that's out for me right now that I wouldn't make one too. Um, but yeah, we've been talking about it. I've been drinking more uh, as far as just involving our circle and getting, you know, more artists involved, just artists in a different way, you know, visually. It's a content thing. But no, there's some there's some good ideas coming. But I'm going to leave that in the dark for now. Sweet. So, yeah, I mean, that's all my questions. Is there any anything else y'all, like, want to talk about before we end the video or, like, plug anything? Go stream maybe live now. <laughs> Out yeah. now yeah, actually, by Cole Joseph. It's a great album. Everywhere. Everywhere you like, listen to music. Yeah, it's only, like, 35 minutes. Like, you, you got that. Just don't watch Futurama tonight and stream that album instead. <laughs> exactly. What a good play. Get off Netflix. Get off Hulu. Get off Disney Plus. HBO Max, and let's know how. Yes, sir. And smoke a joint. <laughs> yeah, and smoke a joint. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I don't have anything to say. Just thank you for having us on. Sweet, yeah. man. I yeah. appreciate I the opportunity. Had a great time. Thank you. Awesome. Thank so you. I'll, <laughs> I'll link both of their, uh, I'll link both of their, uh, like, Instagrams and Spotify's and things of that nature in the description. So go stream more life. Go stream Teeth by Atticus and all Run of their, all of their standalone singles. These guys, they're great. So can't recommend them enough. This guy. <laughs> this this guy's guy great. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you. Yes, Thank sir. You. So y'all, y'all have a good day. See ya. See what happens, I know it's my fault I started rapping